beautiful morning. I'm out here very early. I just woke up, as you can see by my puffy eyes, but we were in Chattanooga for about six days. So you can expect that there's a lot to do in the garden today that I'm very excited about. If you caught it in my little basket glimpse, I am just as much of an indoor plant mom as an outdoor garden mom. So I got this in Chattanooga and it's the cutest thing ever and I need to repot it. But I'm not going to show you guys that today. It's just on my to-do list of things while I'm out here and can make a mess with dirt. So on my list of things to do is a lot. Um, a lot of tomatoes need to be trimmed up and tied up. Um, herbs harvested need to check the squash bug. I know a squash borer got one of my acorn plants. I need to protect the other squash plants from squash borers and throw in making a beautiful zinnia bouquet out of all this magicalness in front of me. These golden yellow ones are definitely my favorite. Yard long beans are still, still going strong. So and we can see where the ones that I've let dried out have dr dried out. So I'm gonna grab those because I saved those for seed. Our tomatoes are finally starting to look like they're doing something. I did get my first few cherry tomatoes that were ripe. Um, very weird that it's this late in the summer for that to be happening. So next year we will make sure to amend our garden beds very, very well. But there is a lot that needs to be done to help these guys stand up. So let's get started on that.
that is definitely a big difference from what was here before. And we had like a ginormous tomato plant that was completely laid over. So oh, even though I'm being negligent, these tomatoes are doing pretty good. Um, went in, trimmed up their bases, pulled out all those weeds because I realized there was not enough airflow getting in around them and that's really really important for tomatoes to avoid disease and the weeds like that grass just grows so fast like, I swear it wasn't that bad last week but we've gotten a lot of rain so part of today is it feels like everything's doubled in size and it probably has um, but these are our moneymaker tomatoes and the ones right here are doing well so are these this guy is still pretty small but that's because that corner is basically rock um, because middle tennessee is like all rock and just so you guys know i am enjoying using these pallets as trellises because i always have somewhere i can tie them either to the straight board or the side boards or the t-post that's back there and it's working really well. Now I have all of these to do and all of that back row to do. I love tomatoes. They take a lot of work. I'll catch back up with you guys once I'm done with all of this. Not sure though what happened to this Amish paste because this one completely died and they basically got us sick as soon as I put them in and I bought these from the nursery so not sure if they were just sick before or what but that's pretty disappointing. Um, but I'll probably go ahead and pull this plant out because I can see signs over here and I just don't want it to ruin all of my plants. <sighs> You can't tell by my face and the difference in lighting. It's been a while. I've been doing the tomato plants and weeding the tomato beds. Like I was starting weeding around them and then I noticed how bad the rest of the beds were. It's been like over an hour. Um, so, wow. I'm so sweaty and I'm so dirty from pulling up all these weeds but it's like an astronomical difference one of the beds is just a goner like I'm not even I I'm gonna weed whack it that's how much of a goner it is um because I guess we didn't lay down our newspaper properly for these new back two beds because they are just like taken over by crabgrass um so let me show you first how satisfyingly clean and put together these beds look. So we got all the weeds pulled out around those, trimmed up our tomato plants. Most of these are still small enough to where they don't need to be tied up yet. And then I went ahead and just checked on our squash plants, wrapped them up with more squash board tape. Um, this one and this one have now gotten got by a squash bore where I didn't have tape um, and the stalk had grown and I wasn't keeping up with it. So we'll let them do their thing, but I've got that one wrapped up and then in these other beds, I have them wrapped up. But look at this beauty that is hidden back behind here. I mean, it's just, massive and then we got one here so my butternut squash plants are doing really well especially on this trellis they love it and this is really great for because this is one plant but it has two runners this plant has two runners and i didn't realize that like these type of squash plants will just keep putting off more i guess like legs i don't know um which is awesome so they're growing up, this one's growing over. I'll show you the other side of what's going on. So like the other side, I got all of this cleaned out. Um, we had a big cherry tomato, so you can see it's stressed out right now, but it'll hopefully come back. 
we had a big one so I put it where those Romas were. This Roma had another really big offshoot coming off. I somehow always accidentally prune my plant to where it has two offshoots um, or like two main stems I guess and that's a somehow some people do that on purpose but apparently I just do it on accident so that's what we're working with. Um, so I put that cherry tomato where the other Amish paste were and then got these all staked up. That base of that one cleaned up because it had a lot of stuff. Like it, it was putting off like five runners on this butternut. So I went ahead and cut off all those because I don't want more than two going, but it's looking really good. So let's see what we need to do next. I definitely need to take care of this volunteer tomato. Um, oh my gosh. So this is the wild cherry that's volunteering all over our garden. And it is literally just, it fits its name, it's wild. So we have a lot of them like here in this bean and then uh, over here that I've got to do something with because this is just way too chaotic. I think my main goal today is to just really check and take care of all of my squash variety plants because I can see where like squash borers have gotten in almost all of my plants and that's just really devastating when as gardeners you know all the care that you've put into these and once a squash borer gets into that plant like it's done for um, there's nothing you can do to prevent it you just hope that maybe you whatever fruit is on that plant that it will ripen before the plant really dies so I'll kind of show you what we've got going on my biggest acorn squash is clearly a done for as you can see this is what squash borer damage looks like um it's just tearing it up from the inside out so that one's doing that i have a ooh, focus. i have a new one over here that's growing and this one so i'm gonna make sure i wrap these up well this is that one um summer squash that we were trying to protect and it's done for but it's still producing so we're letting it go and then over here this one that literally was like this size last week and fine is now this big and as you can see above where i hadn't gotten any tape a squash borer got in so it's incredibly frustrating when this happens. Um, oh, a little moment. Here's a radish going to seed. That's cool. I've never actually let anything go to seed in my garden before. That's really exciting. So I'll try to save that. That's so fun. Uh, okay, anyways. Oh, we did figure out what that random melony plant was that popped up over by my tomatoes. It's a cucumber, so you can see it's a little baby. So, sorry if this hurts your heart, but we're pulling it out because I already have a ton of cucumbers right over there. I don't need more. Okay, let's get started on getting these all wrapped up. I learned this from 1870s Homestead using athletic tape that's stretchy and sticky so it adheses to itself or adheres to itself. Um, wrapping this around the bases where to protect them from a squash borer getting in. So some we are just pulling up because they're done for, others we're gonna try to keep. There's the little guy that is ruining my squash plants. No 
I just think back to like if this is literally what is our family was eating off of how devastating this would be um, because all my pumpkin plants which weren't doing well anyways for some reason um, have a squash borer these two spaghetti or these two butternut squashes have a squash borer like literally 80% of my squash plants have a squash borer in it so it's pretty upsetting but let's go look at some fun stuff instead of all the sad things So our Kajari melons are doing really, really good, which is very exciting. Um, we have so many fruit on those. We have some peppers to harvest and our herbs are really okay. They don't need to be harvested yet. Um, and then I'll probably harvest the zinni up okay and we'll call it a done day. our dahlias is about to bloom which is super exciting it takes so much work to take care of this but it is definitely definitely worth it this basket looks massive because it's so close to the camera okay so I went ahead and pulled out 
my dragon tongue bush beans to that I let just go to seed. Um, so really to get bush beans, it takes so many, like to actually eat from a bush bean and like that feeds you and your family. It takes so many that um, normally like the original pack that you get is nowhere near enough. So you have to get like multiple packs to feed yourself and your family off of that. So what I've been doing the last few seasons instead of buying some is just growing basically only to save seeds from them. Um, so I just kind of let the bush go. I may harvest like some off of it, but basically I'm just letting it grow to grow me seed. So I am harvesting some are still, these were still producing, like you can see there's still flowers. So there are some that I'll eat that are too small that I can't save seed from. But this was my main bush that I had all of my seed pods on. So these have all like gotten as big as they possibly can, are starting to dry out. This um, plant is on its way out and so were the others. So I went ahead and pulled them up. But like this one, you can still eat because it's soft and small. Um, but dragon tongue beans are really, really beautiful. So I'll let these dry out in the pods and then I'll open the pods up and take the seeds out. And that'll be what we plant next year. So a good little harvest of seeds from those. Well, it was really a big chore day. Everything is still taking its sweet time. I feel like I say this every time to start growing in the garden. We're getting a ton of beans, a ton of cucumbers. We're eating all of that. It's really fun to start being able to feed ourselves from the garden for about 75% of what makes up our meals. Um, really looking forward to what will all start ripening here at the end of July and throughout August. Thank you for hanging out with me today, guys.